All right, friends, welcome back to the sawmill. I didn't plan on doing a video today showing this log. This is just another white pine log. I hope to get some four by fours out of it today, possibly four if I'm lucky. There's a lot of challenges in this log and I'll show you guys in just a second what I'm talking about. But what I'm getting at is I really didn't plan on doing a video here, but I know a lot of people are staying home a lot more because of this virus stuff going around. And you might be running out of things to watch on YouTube. So I thought I'd go ahead and make a sawmill video today and give you guys something to watch in case you're lacking entertainment because I know a lot of people probably are right now. So the species is white pine, hoping for four by fours for the timber frame barn. These will be made into girts and I'll try to find a picture and I'll throw it up right here of the girts to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. They connect the bents together on the side and traditionally that's what people use to hang their siding on. But this white pine log is pretty nasty guys. It came from a tree service. It's probably the second or third cut out of this tree due to the clusters of knots. There's knots everywhere and it's just a mess guys. Let me bring the camera in and show you all what I'm talking about. All right friends, right here we have the operator's side. Diameter's probably about 12 inches right there. And as you can see, as we scroll down through this timber, we have the large end down there on the far side. There's just some very large knot clusters right here. That is a good size knot. There's a hand comparison right there. That's a, you know, it's a pretty big knot for a log. Down here, even at the small end, have a cluster of knots. A lot of that going on, guys. And this came from a tree service, not a logger, so they're not as particular when they trim their knots. As you can see, a lot of them are a little proud of the timber. More proud than I like, but we'll deal with it. Got one down here I didn't even see earlier. It's sticking down really good right there. I could get rid of that one as well. But as you can see, this is a very low grade white pine, friends. It's terrible as far as the knot clusters and the sweep in it. I have the hump facing up right now and the horns on the bottom, which means we got a rainbow going this way. Then the bottom, we have a lot of clearance down there between the bed rails and the timber. Check that out. Right there. That's a lot of room right there. A lot of taper in this log. There will be a lot of waste here in sawing this up. But most log yards will throw this in the burn of the chip pile. So getting some timber out of this that's usable is a good thing, even though we might have a lot of waste come out of it. And down here on the far end, as you can see, a lot of stuff going on right there. And I was wrong about this log, friends. I didn't even take a good look at this before I loaded on the mill. This is actually the first cut. And the reason you can tell that is right there is the wedge cut and the back cut. So this must have came from the middle of somebody's yard where it didn't have to fight for sunlight because usually the first cut on pines around here will be decent and not a lot of knot clusters, but look at that. Nasty pine, guys, but we'll get something out of it. Some nice four by fours will be good if we can pull that off. I think we'll get a few of them. So a nasty white pine there, friends, but we'll get something good out of that. We'll at least get four standard four by fours, not dimensional stuff, four inches by four inches out of those. And these four by fours will be really low grade because of the large knots, but they're not for structural integrity. They're just gonna be to kind of hold the bents together and give me something to attach siding to. And I'm also gonna do some stick built standard construction walls between the bents as well. So these right here, the main purpose will probably be just to hold those bents together while we construct the barn. That's gonna be their main purpose. So in the last video, I showed that walnut that we sawed up last year. I got a lot of questions about what happened to that timber. What's well, still here guys, it's over here air drying right beside the sawmill. The moisture content's about 20% on most of them. I will probably have these in the wood miser kiln end of April, probably at the soonest, end of April. All right, friends, I'm gonna do my standard procedure here on a log like this. I'll cut the belly off of it first. We'll turn it 180, cut the horns, and we'll cut the sides off and try to get the largest camp possible and do a measurement and go from there, see how it goes. But forewarn everybody, when I turn this up and do the horns, you're gonna see a lot of waste on that far end and there's no way around that there's just too much taper in this log and the taper the biggest part of it is on the large end down there so there's no way around that so uh 
Hold your comments off if you think I'm being wasteful. I'm not being wasteful. I'll try to get as much timber as I can out of these logs here. So let's get the Yanmar fired up. Take off uh, four cuts. We'll go ahead and square this up completely. And we'll come back in and do a measurement, see how we did. I'm hoping for four four by fours, guys. Four of them. See what happens. Now, friends, got this squared up to an eight and a half inch cant right here. Checking for squareness, and look at that. Perfectly square. We'll start calling this the Coon Method for squaring up timber, with all credit going to my buddy Chris, who came up here about three weeks ago and showed me how to do that. So looking at the timber, it's not too bad. We got the pith right here, off-centered. 
which with the amount of taper we had in this log, that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. I'll come down with the AccuSet four inches and cut our first timber, which will probably put our cut being right there above the heart. And if we're lucky, when I flip this over and use my bed to gauge the thickness, we may get rid of that. I'm not sure. It may be left on the face of the four by four. And if so, that's just the way it's going to be. It's not the best in the world, but we'll get rid of it right there. And that will leave us over here on this side, two more four by fours free of heart. And in case you're wondering on the other end down there, the heart is in about the same location, just a little bit lower. And as you can see right here, we got a lot of weighing right there in the middle, a little bit right here in the corner. That's no problem at all. I'd like to get rid of most of that if I can. So when I flip it up, I'll saw from this top side and we'll get rid of that. There'll be a little bit left like you see right here, but most of it will be gone. So not too bad, guys, not too bad. Really happy with how this turned out. I was expecting probably two or three four by fours at the most based on the taper. I think we've done pretty good here. Life is so 